So let's start with a very simple example so you can understand the idea. I'm up against a super fed Zaya and my burst wasn't enough to assassinate her. And I have nothing else left because I'm an ability power champion, meaning my basic attacks are useless. Now I can either one, run away, or two, I can stay on her until my ult cools down for more damage. But if I run away, I lose the kill. And if I keep chasing, she will kill me. The only correct play is three, a bit of both. So I do back up a little, but I also chase because I need to stay close enough to ult back on top of her as I wait for its cooldown. But during which I need to stay out of her basic attack range. And that's exactly what I do. And by the time she realizes that I'm positioning well enough to chase her down, her only option is to fight back. And she actually almost kills me within a second, which goes to show that option two would have gotten me killed. I get Yasuo's passive shield with silence, so now I can burst him with Empowered Slow. But he's a sustained damage champion, so he sticks to me with Exhaust. But I can run to my cannon wave and then fight back. And here, I turn around to give him a free knockup, but it was a bait. And now he's screwed, as long as I keep close enough for my abilities cooldown, but again, far enough from his range. But can I do the same against a fed Yasuo that has already killed me three times? Because I was playing too aggressive, which usually works, but not against players who know how to punish over aggression. And he has also taken first tower already at five minutes. So now I'm going to play extra careful and only punish his mistakes. He goes for the minions, so I can safely proc his shield and bone plating and then wait for them to time out before attacking again. Then I go in to bait his tornado and dodge, just about. And then as he goes for this last hit, I time my skill 3 to punish. He then tries using the bush to bait me in and gets baited himself. So I ult in and he can finally fight back, but by now he's a bit too low. However, lucky for me, he backed up just in time because he didn't expect his own shield bow passive. I proc his passive shield again. Skill 1 trade. I fail the next last hit punish. He tries to bait me with a recall, but instead I bait him with the movement I explained in the last video, but then I get baited. And then he goes to the Krogs to charge his tornado, and I see that he got his passive shield procced, so I take advantage. And I'm saving my ult this entire time by the way, just so I can bait him in and then dodge his knockup. And now he's really screwed, even though I have nothing right now. It's a free kill as long as I use the movement I explained, as I wait for my cooldowns, which I do. I use all my burst, but now Fiora can run me down with her superior damage per second. But I can fight back next to my tower. From here my goal is to stay out of her range where she's clearly stronger. However, I need to also stay close enough as I wait for my cooldowns. If I back up any further then she'll be out of range and I lose my kill. So I chase her down. When she turns on me, I need to back away from her range. So I get my cooldowns for another burst, and now I just need to not let my kill get away. The point is that while you're waiting for your cooldowns, don't run too far back, but also don't take free damage by getting too close. Now for a more risky example. So I made the mistake of thinking Kaisa was alone, and now I have to flash before I take too much damage. She ults in, so I have to ult away. So now here, I can keep running away and be fine, but I know I can kill her if I can avoid enough damage as my abilities cool down. So I slow her, then get back out of her range. And now she knows she's in danger and flashes away. I continue chasing to remain close enough and she tries turning back on me. So I step back again until I have enough cooldowns. So for the next example, I'm against a champion that I know far too well. So I'll spit pushing for a tower and get caught. I silence Evelyn first and then burst her down before she can CC me, so she's forced to ult away early. Renekton used his dash flash to get to me, but it was too late and now he doesn't have any gap closes left. So here, I knew when his dash cooldown would be back up, so I bait him to use it by faking an attack on the honeyfruit. And now again, he has no gap closing abilities, so I can actually kill him, again, as long as I stay out of his melee range. 
So it's another one of those fights where I would have lost this kill if I ran away from this position, but I stayed in the fight to exploit his mistakes. So later on in the same game, we lose a team fight, but I managed to turn it around by staying in the fight, despite being outnumbered and low health. It starts with me ulting in to poke, but my Soraka gets caught by Ari's charm, which was super unlucky because she actually went for me, but auto targeted onto the low health Soraka instead, so she got killed. Then there Renekton joins the fight before Fiora can, and so Caitlyn gets caught. I try staying in the fight on the side, but there's not much I can do, because I'm outranged and outnumbered. But I'm stubborn, so I stay in the fight and keep positioning aggressively, because I still have stasis for defense, and their only real threat is Ari's charm, so I just need to stay away from her. Renekton can't do much without his dash, so I can poke him down and stay out of his range, and by now, I've done enough damage to them and wasted enough of their abilities that Shivana can clean up. So again, it would have made sense to run away after losing two members and being low on health, but I stayed and turned the fight around because I positioned far enough to not take free damage, but close enough to punish their positional mistakes. This is one of those games where you're winning lane, but the other lanes are feeding, so I need to stop the enemy team from snowballing out of control as an early game Cassidy. So it starts with Fiora dying, and me knowing that with the jungler there, they will stay to take as many plates as possible. So to stop them from snowballing, I rotate. Then here I needed just a little more damage on Garen, but I can't wait for my ult otherwise Gragas would kill me, so I flash to avoid his damage and to basic attack Garen. And you can see that I definitely would have died to Gragas if I didn't flash away from him early. And then back in lane, I'm about to kill Yone until I get ganked, but instead of running away, I just wait here for them to overextend and get another kill. And the next play was in my last video where I was using all my damage and then trying to stay close enough as I wait for my cooldowns while also avoiding his damage. But like I said, my team is getting destroyed and they just got first blood tower, so they're snowballing out of control. And with that lead, they go for first dragon. And for some reason, my team wants to contest, even though I have zero mana. This was actually a bad macro call by me for not having record already. So from here, I need to pull off a miracle, otherwise this game is completely over if my team gets killed. The first thing I do is recover some mana with skill 2, but I cannot ult in aggressively without flash. So I hold it and just poke from range. But I use my presence to zone away their fed jinx from following up on this fight. And as she backs off, I try to get in position for exactly when my cooldowns return. Then I just chase jinx and slow her for my team to follow up. So next fight starts as I get caught by Garen, but I save my ultimate and bait him into the pit, then I ult to my team, and now he's screwed because I can easily keep my distance as I chase him. And when I see Gragas, I know he's gonna ult to save him, so I sidestep, but all of a sudden their entire team shows up. I position aggressively to hopefully pressure them off my team. Here I'm basically baiting their attention onto me, because when they turn on me, I can just ult away. After this, they all rotate to Herald and I follow them, but again, I hold my ult and just poke from a safe distance. And you can see how I'm trying to always stay close enough for my own range, and I'll only go in if I see someone out of position. So I get Jinx's flash, and for some reason the Fiora jumps in over the wall into four of them, and I make the mistake of trying to help, and now I have to hopefully avoid enough damage as I wait for my ultimate. So from this position, I should just ult away and survive, but instead I stay in the fight. But I end up wasting my ult on Yone because he would have died anyway. And for my next ult, again, I hold it until the last second, which was a mistake to be honest because I was pretty lucky to get out of this one, but still we lose this fight until they end up over chasing. So what do I do? Instead of running away completely, 
I stay close to the fight because he can't possibly go for me if he's going for Graves. And the same once again. I stay in the fight because now I have defensive abilities for when he turns on me. And the Graves knows what he's doing also. So the point was to show you how important it is to always stay close to the action so you are in position when your abilities come off cooldown. My top and ADC get caught overextending, so I make my way to defend Baron. The Garen runs into me head first, so I just silence first so he can't shield the rest of my damage. And I only ult when I know I have the execute. But now I have no cooldowns and we're still down in numbers 2 versus 3. But instead of running away, I stay as close as I safely can because my eyes are on Jinx. Right now her position is fine because I just used everything. But a few seconds later, that same position is a mistake. So I flash ult and assassinate the Jinx. And now we get Baron instead. So you can see the difference it made by just staying close enough to the fight and not running too far back. The point is to stay in position to exploit the enemy's position of mistakes. My next guide covers in detail how to roam the map and gank other lanes, which can be done from any lane. And the guide is currently up on Patreon for early access for those of you who would like to support my work.